How's it going everybody? Chaotic Meatball here and welcome back to another Monotype Hardcore Nuzlocke Challenge. This time around, I decided that I want to play Fire Red without using a Legendary this time, instead only using Fighting Types. And yeah, I'm sure that'll mean I get less views simply because of how I run this game so often, but I was very intrigued by this run. See, there's only four encounters in the entire game, those being Mankey on Route 22, Machop in Rock Tunnel, a choice of Hitmonlee or Hitmonchan in the Karate Dojo in Saffron City, and Poliwag on Route 6 using the Good Rod. That's right, we only get access to Primate, Hitmonlee or Hitmonchan, Polyrath, and Machoke, since even though it's not an outright rule in Nuzlocke that you can't connect to other games, I figured that it was more of an implied rule. As for actual rules, you can find a detailed list of them in the description. Remember to give this video a like, subscribe since we're less than 10,000 away from 100,000, and now that you've done that, let's get into the video. So as a starter, I chose Bulbasaur because I want my rival to have a fire-flying Charizard by the end, the only thing that'll actually have a type advantage over my team. Fire is also pretty irritating too, seeing as Burn has physical attack, so this should make for a good challenge. After delivering the parcel though, I'm able to head over to Route 22 and grab my first encounter in Mankey. I name him Fractal after the Tri-Brigade monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh, and now I must train. Immediately, the priority is to get Mankey up to near the level camp of 14, since there's only one required trainer in Verdian Forest, but since I caught this one at level 2, the initial training was pretty rough. Basically, Mankey just got beaten up until a fluke few level 2 Pidgeys and Raditzes managed to go down, and I got a little bit of a power boost. I was mainly focused on level 2 and 3 Pidgeys and Raditzes here on Route 1, as they both give speed EVs, which we'll need for later on in the run, while Mankey on Route 22 gives attack EVs, allowing me to focus on both and get as much as I could get away with, grinding up to level 14 before heading into the forest, cleaning house against the single required bug catcher in his Weedle, moving into Pewter City, and into its gym. Of course, I don't really want any more EXP or EVs that I don't need, so instead of fighting the junior trainer, I went straight for Brock. He leads with Geodude, so I go straight for Karate Chop and Low Kick, taking it out in two shots through a Defense Curl, and then taking out Onyx in a single Low Kick to win. Well, very easy, which means I can go back through Viridian Forest and back to Route 22 in order to grind on more level 2 and 3 Rattatas and Mankeys. I also made sure to immediately slap Rock Tomb onto Mankey, seeing as it'll be my greatest defense against my rivals Pidgeotto and Charmander that I'll have to take on over in Cerulean City. I stayed around here until midway through level 18, getting as many Eevees as possible before running through all of the required trainers on Route 3 and in Mount Moon, getting over to Cerulean City at level 20. I figured that I'd be able to take on Misty at a slightly lower level so that I'd have enough EXP wiggle room in order to get to Surge without going over the level cap, as we can't get a new encounter until after we beat Lieutenant Surge. Sadly though, Starmie absolutely mops the floor with me. I figured that this would be a two-shot with Rock Tomb to lower speed than Mega Punch, but I overestimated Smakey's attack by a good country mile here. So attempt number two, and I did the same thing because I'm insane, picking Bulbasaur and capturing Mankey on Route 22, but this time I focused more on facing exclusively level 2 Pokemon so that I'd have the ability to get more EVs and attack and speed for Starmie, since if I can outspeed and hit hard enough, Mega Punch should be a 2-shot. By the time Mankey was level 14, it already had 34 attack and 31 speed, making Bronca Cinch once again to take down, leveling Mankey once again up to halfway through level 18 before taking on everything needed on Route 3 and Mount Moon. This time, I decided to take on my rival first before Misty, so that I could be able to actually be at level 21 for her. He leads with Pidgeotto, so I immediately fire off Rock Tomb, unfortunately missing the KO just barely which is not a good sign for Misty, but alas, I only get hit with a sand attack, shifting over to low kick to KO and lead into Abra. No attacking moves means that it goes down to a single Mega Punch, leading to Rattata. This rodent knows that it'll get outsped in one shot by a fighting move, so it goes for quick attack, doing some mild damage before going down to low kick and leaving just Charmander. Mankey misses two Rock Tombs and gets hit with two Embers, but that's fine as Mankey doesn't get burned, letting Rock Tomb KO on the third attack and win me the fight. Of course, my brain thinks that I'm going to get too close to accidentally leveling up and going over the level cap if I do any more required battles, so I just went into Misty's gym. 
Staryu still goes down to a single low kick, which is great, but Starmie's still a huge friggin' problem. It still goes first, meaning I only have two attacks to get this thing down. So, I go for Rock Tomb, it lands, and does around a third, lowering its speed. So, I go for Mega Punch, accepting that I'll probably have to try again, and instead give Mankey Mega Kick instead, but I get a critical hit, KOing and winning me the fight. Well, uh, I guess I'll take it. I mean, let's just hope I don't screw up past this point and have to do it all again. I really don't want to see how many attempts it takes me to get another critical hit or a Mega Kick to land. So, as I'm progressing further up through routes 24 and 25, I'm watching Mankey's EXP bar grow further and further and realizing, oh god, there is no physical way I'm going to be able to stay under the level cap here. And while I'm able to get the SS ticket from Bill, by the rocket grunt in Cerulean City, Mankey goes up to level 25, and I cannot continue. So, I reset once again and go into attempt number 3. This time, I decided to only EV train until I got close to level 11, using the bug catcher in the forest to get Mankey to level 11 and learned Karate Chop before facing Brock. I figured the lower level I am here, the more potential I have at being able to get through all of routes 24 and 25 before even challenging Misty. Brock is still an easy fight, as Geodude is a two-shot with low kick and Karate Chop, but Onyx is no longer a one-shot with low kick landing a measly tackle in between before I land a second one to KO and win the fight. Alright, well this is looking promising, and by using the bag manipulation technique often found in Generation 3 speedruns, I'm able to get by every single spinning trainer on Route 3 and in Mount Moon in order to get into Cerulean City at level 16. Yes, that means fighting the rival at level 16 as well. This same thing happens here as it did in my first attempt against him, two-shotting Pidgeotto with Rock Tomb through a sand attack. Next up, of course, I Mega Punch Abra for a one-shot, but instead of getting one-shot Rattata with Low Kick, it's just shy, meaning it lands two quick attacks and gets Mankey down to 16 HP before going down to a second Low Kick, bringing me up to 19 HP after a level up and leaving just Charmander. I'm pretty sure that I can only survive a single Ember at this point, so I need to not miss at all. Mankey outspeeds and hits Rock Tomb, but instead of it holding on, I get a critical hit, instantly KOing and winning me the battle. Well, at least I didn't get any closer, but now that Mankey's only level 17, I was able to easily breeze through all of the required trainers on routes 24 and 25, getting to level 21 and needing only a single wild Pokemon to push me up enough to where Misty Staryu would allow Mankey to level up to level 22 off of it. This time, also, Mankey's nature is adamant, which is absolutely perfect, so I'm expecting Starmie to be a lot easier than it was in the previous two attempts. Staryu still goes down to a Mega Punch, getting Mankey to level 22 before Starmie comes out. Water Pulse does slightly over half as Rock Tomb... only does about a quarter? Well, time for attempt four and... Ooh. Well, I did not expect to get another critical hit. I guess we're still in this attempt. Now that I've got enough EXP to move towards Route 6 in Vermilion City, I needed to avoid each and every optional trainer. I literally cannot afford to fight a single one. I only have enough EXP to fight the Rocket Grunt here in Cerulean City that gives you Dig, which we'll need for Lieutenant Surge, the last trainer on Route 6 with a Spiro and a Raticate, my rival on the SSN, and the one required trainer in the Vermilion City Gym. But before we go in there, let's talk about the rival. See, now that he has Charmeleon, Raticate, and Kadabra, this fight yields a lot more EXP and is a lot harder for a Mankey that's only level 23, or 24 later on in the fight. This battle starts off a lot like the last rival fight, with Rock Tomb and Low Kick being a two-shot combo through a sand attack on Pidgeotto, but instead of leading into a defenseless Abra, we've got a powerful Kadabra on our hands. My first attempt at Mega Punch misses, which worries me a ton, but Kadabra only uses Disable, missing and letting me go for Mega Punch once again to KO. Half of his team remaining, with Raticate coming out third and going down to a single Low Kick. The added weight must have helped with that, and not going for quick attack is certainly a plus, leaving just Charmeleon. This goes rather poorly, as I miss my first three attempts of Rock Tomb, getting hit with Growl and two Embers that fortunately don't burn before my fourth attempt of Rock Tomb does a bit over half, making Mankey take one more Ember. But if I get hit one more time, it's to attempt number four we go. But thankfully, Rock Tomb does land once more, KOing Charmeleon and getting past this bastard. That was a lot closer than I wanted it to be, but man, I'm so close to being able to get that second encounter. Once Machop's in my hands, I'm sure this run will be much, much easier. 
Now that the SSN's gone though, I replaced Karate Chop with the TM for Dig and went into Surge's gym, avoiding the spinners while solving the puzzle, taking on this old man's Pikachu, and, and barely not leveling up before going into the third gym battle. I am very relieved that the math turned out correct here. Two Digs manages to take out both Surge's Voltorb and Pikachu, but Raichu's barely able to withstand it. It's a miracle I even managed to land one through two double teams anyway, but Static paralyzes Mankey as Surge heals with a Super Potion. And there's no chance in hell I'm going for a two-turn move while paralyzed, so I go for Low Kick, barely not KOing again and getting hit with a massive Shockwave. This brings me down to 8 HP, and I either hit through Paralysis in two double teams, or two attempt number four we go, and... Are you serious? Well, I guess the third attempt really is the charm. Low Kick manages to connect after the Shockwave, winning me the battle once again. Guess Mankey really wants a friend. Guess we'll reward him. After a few required battles on Route 9, I'm finally able to get into Rock Tunnel, capturing my second encounter in Machop. I name it Nerval, which is probably the most iffy name for these fighting types, since it's a winged beast, but I digress. Since the level cap is now level 29, we'll be evolving both this and Mankey very shortly, but my main priority was to go Eevee train Machop as much as possible. And there's not many required trainers between Rock Tunnel and Celadon City Gym, so I've just headed all the way back through Diglett's Cave and right into Route 22, where level 2 and 3 Mankeys and Rattatas were the way. And by the time I finished up Rock Tunnel, Machop evolved into Machoke at level 28, as well as Mankey into Primeape at the same level. Now, we've got some real superpower behind this. Pun entirely intended, despite the lack of that attack in my party. I've also got a Move Tutor in here that'll teach one of my Pokémon Rock Slide. So, I of course give it to Machoke as Primeape already has Rock Tomb, varying up my options even further than they already were. Making my way into Lavender Town and south of it means I can get the TM for Return, which will be great coming up. And before going into the Celadon City Gym, I made sure to grab two TMs for Brick Break from the department store, giving one each to Machoke and Primeape, as well as giving Primeape the TM for Aerial Ace and the TM to Machoke for Return. And it just so happens that we got a Cherry Berry right outside of Rock Tunnel's first entrance. So I gave that to Primeape, and we should be in fantastic shape here. There's a slight bit of edging that can be done before fighting Erica, so I got some more EVs, pretty much finishing off my choke and getting more on Primeape before going into the fight. She starts off with Victory Bell, so I go with Primeape, outspeeding and landing Aerial Ace to nearly KO before taking a Stun Spore. It's, of course, negated thanks to the Cherry Berry, and I use another one to KO, leading to Tangela. It's a near one-shot as well, but she's able to get off a Poison Powder, which is probably the best thing that could have happened here, as now Vileplume won't be able to paralyze Primeape later on in the fight. She heals with a Hyper Potion as some Poison damage accumulates, and I KO with two more Aerial Aces, leaving just Vileplume. Aerial Ace nearly one-shots again here, leading to Primeape taking a Giga Drain, and thankfully, it doesn't do enough to KO or put Vileplume out of range to go down to Aerial Ace, so one more finishes the job, leaving Erica looking up at the lights while I take the Rainbow Badge. With that in hand, though, the level cap also increases from level 29 to 43, so we'll definitely not have any more problems with the XP management for the rest of the run. The Rocket Hideout is pretty darn easy to get through as well, leaving just Giovanni as our next boss fight. He's got three Pokemon weak to fighting types, though, so this is a clean sweep. He leads with Onyx, but I'm an idiot and click Rock Tomb first, letting him live a turn before going down to Brick Break, with Rhyhorn falling to the same fate. Last out is Kangaskhan, and yeah, Brick Break's enough to KO. Easy enough, but we'll actually have a challenge against our rival here over in the Pokemon Tower. Is what I would say if I couldn't just overlevel for it. So I just took out all of the optional trainers on Route 6, Route 11, Route 12, Route 10, Route 24, 25, 3, Mount Moon, literally anywhere I could. This gives me plenty of overlevelage in order to take out my rival here. He leads with Pidgeotto, so I lead with Primeape, missing a Rock Tomb as he hits a Gust for under half, but next turn it lands in one shots with Execute following up. Aerial Ace is another one-shot KO, so he goes for Kadabra, and Aerial Ace does the job just as well, leaving just Charmeleon and Gyarados. He goes for the latter, so I swap over to Machoke, hitting a Rock Slide for the KO, and doing the same on Charmeleon to win the fight. Alright, well, with that bit of EXP from the Pokémon Tower added on as well, and getting the Poké Flute, I figured I'd head into Saffron City's Fighting Dojo in order to grab Hitmonlee. 
This is a massively good attacker, and I think that it'll be my one-way ticket to taking out Sabrina shortly, but I can't help but wonder if a tanky Pokemon like Hitmonchan would be the better decision. If I lose this attempt, I'll probably take Hitmonchan, but we'll have to see how everything goes. With him, though, of course, I go back to Route 22 to EV train Hitmonlee, getting all of that delicious attack and speed that I need to get through this challenge. And since I have the Poke Flute again, I'm able to head on down to Fuchsia City, grab all the HMs there as well as the Good Rod, which opens up our last encounter over on Route 6, that being Poliwag. I forgot to mention that I nicknamed Hitmonlee Keros and Poliwag Kit, which is kind of funny because Tri Brigade Kit's attribute is fire, but, you know, water type. <laughs> uh, I've got a weird sense of humor. Since I don't have Hitmonchan though, I need something a bit bulky and Poliwrath is going to be just that. So I get a few more resistances and I EV train it in defense, HP, and special attack. Basically an even 128 split between HP and defense and 252 in special attack, as my final moveset with this will be Surf, Psychic, Ice Beam, and Hypnosis. Actually, that final moveset is obtainable already, since Poliwag started out with Hypnosis, Surf was gotten in Fuchsia City, Psychic was gotten in Saffron City, and Ice Beam was easily purchasable in the Celadon Game Corner, so therefore this thing is going to be my perfect ticket to beating Koga. First things first though, I want to get through Self Company's two boss battles before I take on those two back-to-back -back gems. First up is my rival, and he leads with Pidgeot, so I go for Poliwrath taking a wing attack for about a third damage as I put it to sleep with Hypnosis, hitting two Ice Beams to KO and lead into Charizard. I gave Poliwrath a Citrus Berry just for this, as I know Surf will be a two-shot on it, but I have to survive two wing attacks to do so. Poliwrath does manage to take out Charizard, but with only four HP remaining, so it's out for the rest of the fight. Third is Alakazam, which is pretty easy to swap in since it only has Future Sight in his attacking move. So I went into Hitmonlee, going for Thief and realizing that Dark moves are special in this generation. Whoops. So I swapped over to Strength to KO, taking the Future Sight attack as Execute comes out next. It does about a third with Future Sight, but that's fine as Strength is able to one-shot Execute. I probably didn't need that critical hit too, but that was indeed appreciated. Last out is Gyarados, and with that Intimidate drop, that forces me to swap out into Primeape. Gyarados loves Dragon Rage as well, and since Primeape only has 112 HP, I gave it an Orenberry so that it can survive three of them, in case of Rock Tomb miss. But that doesn't happen as Rock Tomb and Aerial Ace manage to KO, winning me the fight. Gotta say, the berry strategies really came in clutch here. Very happy that those were available to me, and I really wish I could grow more. But alas, we have Giovanni to take care of next. Thankfully, he should be a sweep with my party. Giovanni kicks off with an Nidorino as they go for Poliwrath, and I figured Psychic would be a one-shot, but it misses just barely, letting him hit a very light Fury attack before going down to a second. Next out is Nidoqueen, who only goes for a weak Poison Sting and Double Kick before going down to two Surfs, which then leads to Kangaskhan. I tried putting it to sleep twice because I wanted an easy swap into Machoke, but that doesn't work, leading to Poliwrath taking two Tail Whips, and I'm not about to leave it in on minus two defense, so I hard swap for Machoke, taking a Mega Punch in Rage before landing a massive Brick Break, barely not one-shotting, but then leading to another Mega Punch from Kangaskhan, which was really close to KOing. Thankfully it doesn't, and Machoke is able to follow up with one more Brick Break, leaving just Rhyhorn. With that, I just swapped Poliwrath back in though, KOing with Surf and winning the match. Not really a struggle, though I'm not sure why Kangaskhan's second Mega Punch did so much more damage than the first one. Did it have anything to do with Rage? Eh, leave a comment below if you know, since I sure couldn't find anything. Gym Badge rush time here soon though, but before that, I made sure to clear out the trainers on routes 13 through 15, getting my party up to level 41 before going into Koga's Gym. I figured that I'd fight as few trainers as possible, which basically means only one, since all of his trainers have Psychic-type Pokemon instead of Poison-types for some reason. Um, okay then. Koga starts off with Coughing, so I go for Poliwrath again, KOing with a single Psychic and leading into Muck. Poliwrath outspeeds and lands a Psychic for over half, but it's not enough to put him into healing range, leading to a Minimize and a second Psychic that lands and KOs, leading into the second Coughing. Second verse, same as the first, which just leaves Weezing. Finally, the Petra Berry that I gave to it comes in though, as Psychic barely does it one shot, leading to a toxic landing and essentially being negated. But now that he's locked into a Hyper Potion, two more Psychics are all I need to KO and win the fight. 
One down, one more to go until the level cap goes up. Now that I've got access to surf outside of battle though, I've got a good number of trainers to edge my way up to the cusp of level 44, taking on the trainers on Route 21, the Pokemon Mansion, and some of them in Blaine's Gym, getting everyone to level 43, and getting them ready to fight Sabrina. I mean, I guess I really didn't need to edge up, since Hitmonlee manages to KO Kadabra, Mr. Mime, and Alakazam all with a single strength each, outspeeding all of them and leaving just Venom off. It barely survives, but it misses Super Sonic, locking Sabrina into a Hyper Potion and letting Hitmonlee take it out in two more strengths, winning me the fight in damageless fashion. We don't have any losses so far either. Still at a party of four, and honestly, if we lose anything before the league, I feel like we don't have a chance. Let's make Blaine, Giovanni, and the rival Deathless as well. Of course, training the team up to level 47 was paramount now, and with the remaining trainers in the region, I was only barely able to get Polyrath to level 47, so the rest of the training had to be done with the trainers on Cycling Road and with wild Pokemon in the Seafoam Islands. This didn't take too too long, but once everyone was ready, I challenged Blaine. Thankfully, having a part water type on the team makes this fight trivial, as Growlithe, Ponyta, Rapidash, and Arcanine all go down to a single surf apiece, with the latter two outspeeding and landing Stomp and Fire Bast respectively, but still falling nonetheless, giving me a few more levels to jump up before fighting Giovanni. Since I'm out of trainers on the mainland, I took the opportunity to take on the trainers over on the Sevi Islands when Bill offers to bring me over there, and boy it has been a while since I've gone over here. This doesn't level the party completely though, so of course I used Giovanni's gym trainers as well, and even then it wasn't enough to edge everyone up, but I figured I had already trained Polyrath up, that should be plenty enough for this fight. One last note before the gym fight though, I actually kept Thief on Hitmonlee throughout this run, despite it being a useless special move for this very moment. See, the martial artists in here, all of their Pokemon hold black belts, which increases the power of fighting type moves when held. I forgot on the first one, but managed to get two of them from the other two trainers in here. Luckily, there's another person with these in the victory road, so I'll be fine with getting another one, since I don't need one for Polyrath. Anyway, Giovanni leads off with Rhyhorn, so I go with Polyrath, and this easily devolves into a sweep. Rhyhorn, Dugtrio, Nidoqueen, Nidoking, and Rhyhorn number two all go down to a single surf each, with Dugtrio being the only one to land and attack an Earthquake, winning me the fight once again. Yeah, unsurprising, but now it's time for the fun and very difficult part. See, I'm going into the league like I did in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire with the Fairy-only Hardcore Nuzlocke, at the level of the first Elite Four member's ace rather than the last, meaning I'm going in at level 54 rather than Lance's level 60, which will make this a whole lot harder, especially with only four members of the team. And the champion having level 63 as his ace, this is gonna be either a tragedy or a miracle. To alleviate this, I made sure to grab all of the rare candies from around the region, which totals up to 10. Yeah, not too much to really disperse among four teammates, but I have a feeling that I'll be able to make it work. After getting everyone to level 53 though, I figured it was time to fight my rival for the last time before he becomes champion. He leads with Pidgeot, so I lead Polyrath, tricking him into using Feather Dance as Polyrath is normally a physical attacker, instead of going for Ice Beam and barely missing the one shot as it freezes him, making him wide open to a second Ice Beam to KO with Charizard following up. Wing Attack does around a third as Surf barely misses the one shot again, so we do the same next turn, letting me KO and lead an Alakazam. Of course, he's gonna go for Future Sight, so I just KO'd with two Ice Beams, doing the same to Execute in one Ice Beam and one Surf to Rhyhorn afterwards, taking the Future Sight attack and surviving up with 31 HP as Gyarados comes in last. I must say that Polyrath's worked pretty hard this battle, so I swap him out and let Machoke take the lead as he sets up Rain Dance. Next turn, Gyarados goes for Leer for some reason, despite water being special in this generation, as I miss with Rock Slide. Next turn, he manages to land a Hydro Pump for slightly under half, while I land the second attempt of Rock Slide to nearly KO once again. I keep coming up slightly short on my estimations here, but I have a 15 out of 16 chance of surviving another Hydro Pump, but that's technically higher because of the 85% accuracy, but I don't feel like doing math. So I stay in on a second, hanging on in low red HP as Machoke gets off a return to KO, winning me the fight. I don't know why Machoke keeps ending up on the receiving end of near KOs. It's, uh, it's scaring me a bit too much, and I hope he doesn't go down during the victory road. 
Fortunately, no one goes down inside of Victory Road, allowing me to edge up to the cusp of level 55. Last minute prep time, and there's a few things I need. Firstly, the TM for Earthquake is going on Machoke immediately now that I've got it from Giovanni. That gives two of my Pokemon a Ground-type answer as Primeape still has Dig, but that's not all. I grab the Bulk Up TM and another rare candy from the Sylph Company, leaving just one more stop over in Celadon's Game Corner where I can trade in a thousand coins from Mystic Water. Probably should have done this a lot sooner for Polyrath, but it's fine. I could have also spent some time using Hitmonlee's Thief on Abra over on Route 24, but I edged up so much before thinking of the idea, so that's on me. But I should be fine nonetheless. Lastly, of course, I made sure to deposit my HM user Farfetch'd, grab a few full restores, full heals, and max potions from the merchant here in the Indigo Plateau, lastly teaching Bulk up to Machoke in replace of Return, and headed on in. Do you think I can do it on this attempt? And if so, how many Pokemon do you think I'll lose? Leave a comment down below, and let's tear them down because it's clobberin' time. If you know, you know. Lorelei's up first, so I lead Machoke using Bulk Up twice through Hail and Safeguard before taking a Surf for slightly under half damage as Brick Break KOs leading to Slowbro. Well, that's unfortunate. I was hoping to get through a few more Ice types first. My best bet here, though, is to use Rock Slide, as it has the best chance of getting Slowbro not to move next turn with a flinch, but that doesn't happen. Fortunately, though, it doesn't matter since he just uses Amnesia, raising his special defense and allowing me to use Earthquake and pick up the second KO of the bout, leading to Cloyster. It decides to be a pest and use Protect, wearing out the last turn of Hail, and somehow outspeeds Machoke, setting up another one as Brick Break KOs it, with Jinx out fourth. I figured this would be a good time to swap out into Polyrath since I'm expecting Ice Punch, which is true, but she's faster, hitting an Attract and holding me down as she manages to miss three lovely kisses in a row. What an eventful battle we're having. But that finally ends as a Surf connects for under half, as she swaps out for Lapras next turn since it has Water Absorb. I didn't account for this as I just clicked Surf again, giving her a free switch, but that's fine as I can just put it to sleep with Hypnosis, taking a Bonnie Slam and going out into Primate to take it down with four Brick Breaks since I had to work through two full restores in a Citrus Berry. Last out is her half damage Jinx, but there's no way it outspeeds Primate, so I just click Brick Break, KOing and finishing the battle. Alright, one member down, no casualties, let's keep it that way for Bruno. He leads with Onyx, which Polyrath outspeeds and KOs with Surf, leading to his second Onyx. Um, not sure why he sent this in next, but it does manage to outspeed, landing a light earthquake as Surf also takes it out, putting me at a nice 4-3 lead. Hitmonchan's out next and it misses Sky Uppercut as Psychic takes out around two-thirds of its health as the second connects next turn, but it's not enough to take Polyrath below half though, so I just use another Psychic to KO, leaving just Machamp and Hitmonlee. He opts for the latter, going for two Mega Kicks and nearly KOing Polyrath as I manage to KO with two Psychics, but now I've got a hard swap on his strongest Mon. Because I'm so low HP here, he's gonna go for a random move and that can both be either good or bad, so I swap into Machoke, and thankfully he opts for Rock Tomb, missing as I swap in and basically get a free switch. Next turn, he hits Cross Chop for exactly half damage as Brick Break does nearly the same amount to him, but I'm pretty sure that's a high roll on his part, so I stay in, taking another Cross Chop, and living on 7 HP as I hit another Brick Break. Sadly, I can't risk swapping and losing one of my other party members, so I'd rather just lose Machoke here to get a clean switch over to Hitmonlee to finish this with Brick Break, but to my happy surprise, he misses Cross Chop, letting Machoke get one last Brick Break off to KO and win me the fight. I was willing to sack there. I guess I got rewarded for my faith in my Pokemon? Oh, who am I kidding? That was all luck. Third on the docket is Agatha, and unsurprisingly enough, I'm using Polyrath here since it has Psychic. However, I don't want to use it until later on, really, so first turn I go for Hypnosis, despite the fact that I know she's probably going to use Double Team. Thankfully, it does hit, and, well, I may as well just use Psychic, but stay at full health, hitting three of them as I take a very light Shadow Punch, taking it out and leading to Golbat. This is kind of why I wanted to swap out, since I knew Air Cutter was going to hurt, but I did manage to take it out with two Ice Beams, taking around 75% damage in the process, though. Next out is Haunter, and I'm pretty comfortable in knowing that it can't KO me on this turn, so I went for Psychic, getting outsped, but she uses Curse, making taking her down much easier. 
Luckily, I'm still above 1 4th HP by just a handful of points, so with her second Gengar coming in, I swapped for Primeape, taking a Shadow Ball for a little under half. I don't think I'm going to be able to KO here, but I need to reserve Pachoke for Arbok, preferably without getting intimidated since Earthquake needs to KO it. So it's time to make the ultimate sacrifice. I swap into Hitmonlee, using a single Thief as a Sludge Bomb and Shadow Ball takes it out, putting our first death on board. The other three are able to quickly clean up from here though, as Machoke comes in and uses Bulk Up and Rock Slide, avoiding two Hypnosis as Rock Slide barely misses the KO, but locks her into a full restore, letting me get two more off and... Wait, was that a speed tie? Huh. Well, she manages to put Machoke to sleep, landing a good few Sludge Bombs before Machoke finally wakes up and hits one more Rock Slide, KOing and leaving just Arbok. This is kind of why I set up Bulk Up once though, as now Intimidate's negated, and I can go ahead and... Holy crap, that was close. Well, Earthquake does take it out, but man, my team did almost not make it through that one. One loss is already bad enough on a team of four, and with two battles left, that's really not a good look. Thankfully, Polyrath more than carries for the next battle, since this is also where I decide to use a few of my stored rare candies, getting Polyrath to level 58 since it'll basically be spamming Ice Beam throughout this entire battle. Well, aside from Lance's lead, that is, being Gyarados. Machoke's a pretty good lead here, though, as he basically just spams Dragon Rage and Twister, two incredibly weak moves that basically let me charge up three bulk ups and one-shot Gyarados with Rock Slide leading to Aerodactyl. The defense boosts are also useful here, as that means Wing Attack can't KO me unless it gets a crit, despite being at 63 HP. One does connect and brings Machoke down to 13 HP, letting me fire off another Rock Slide for the KO, leaving just the Dragons. I'm betting on an Outrage use here, so I swap into Primeape to soak up an attack from it, then swap again into Polyrath to take the second attack, confusing Dragonite from Fatigue. It had enough HP to take a third, but thankfully I didn't have to. I figured I'd also stack Hypnosis on there just to make sure that it won't be able to hit Polyrath, landing my first attempt and shifting to Ice Beam for that quad super effective damage, KOing and leading to his first Dragonair. Ice Beam isn't quite a one shot on it thanks to it only being normal super effective, letting him get off a Thunder Wave, but upon use of a full restore, the second Ice Beam gets a critical hit, leaving just the second Dragonair. For some reason it wastes a turn setting up Safeguard which lets me hit another Ice Beam for a near KO. Next turn's a bit scary though, as he lands a critical Hyper Beam. Not quite finishing off Polyrath though, so I have two turns to break through Paralysis and hit another Ice Beam. But come on, I don't need more than one. Landing the last one and winning the bout. Alright, one more battle left and it's against a champion. A 3 on 6 battle should sound a lot easier on paper than my 1 on 6 legendary speedruns, but I'm pretty stressed right here. I have a not fully evolved Pokemon, as well as a fast but fragile Primeape, and a special attacking Polyrath that's more of a gimmick than anything. So, for the first time in the league, I decided to swap one of my held items, giving Machoke the Quick Claw rather than the Black Belt, since I see this coming in handy a ton during this last fight. With the remaining rare candies though, I bring Machoke up to level 60, Polyrath to level 59, and Primeape to level 58. Last chance to get your guess in the comments, but now it's time to conquer the final frontier. The champion leads with a Pidgeot, which fortunately isn't too much to handle with Machoke, as it's able to outspeed thanks to the Quick Claw, landing at Rock Slide and flinching Pidgeot. Already coming in clutch, as Feather Dance lowers Machoke's attack by two stages next turn. But that's fine, as the second Rock Slide is still able to do enough damage to KO Pidgeot, leading to Alakazam. It manages to get off a Future Spike, and despite my minus two attack, I continue on, hitting an Earthquake for around a third of its HP. Eh, that's not too good, so I shift over to Rock Slide in case the Quick Claw activates, and somehow my intuition was correct here, hitting and flinching once again, letting Machoke KO with a second Earthquake after he for some reason goes for Future Sight again. Well, okay, third out is Charizard, and I'm having thoughts about swapping into Polyrath here, but I'm 100% sure that Machoke can survive a Fire Blast here, and Rock Slide should still be a two-shot despite my minus two attack. Fortunately, I don't have to find out the result of my guess as he misses Fire Blast, letting me hit the first Rock Slide, activating the Citrus Berry, but it's not doing enough to keep him alive through the second Rock Slide, Quick Claw and all again. Now, so much for a 20% chance of activating, this seems like it's more like a 40% chance. Told you it was going to come in handy, I just didn't realize how handy. 
fourth is Executor, and I'm pretty confident I can get a free swap out of this Minus to attack, since Primeape has the ability Vital Spirit, which basically means I can't fall asleep. And since Executor knows Sleep Powder, I'm pretty sure that's what it's going to go for. My prediction is correct, letting me get into Primeape and use Aerial Ace for half as he uses Giga Drain. I don't want to risk using another Aerial Ace and him getting into potential healing range, since he's not guaranteed to use Giga Drain again. So I swap for Brick Break, regrettably getting a critical and leaving him in the red still. This is fine though, as he does end up going for a second Giga Drain, meaning a second Aerial Ace is enough to KO leading to Rhydon. I don't want Polyrath to get hurt on a switch here, so I just use Brick Break, sacking Primate for the safe switch, hitting Surf after getting him to waste a full restore for a one-shot, leaving just Gyarados. It's two on one, so I should be in an amazing position, especially after putting Gyarados to sleep on a first try Hypnosis after he outspeeds and lands Thrash. This doesn't keep him asleep for long though, as he wakes up in two turns and uses Dragon Rage as I get off two Psychics, sadly with no special defense drops. So I just went for Hypnosis again, using Psychic twice more before a full restore comes in, and yet again no special defense drops. A fifth doesn't do it either, and I've only got one more chance to use Hypnosis before Dragon Rage does enough damage to take out Polyrath. Thankfully it does land again, so I go back to Psychic, landing a sixth and seventh Psychic without any special defense drops, but the eighth and final Psychic manages to get a critical hit, taking out Gyarados, and winning me the run with a very close call. Seriously, I don't know if Machoke would have been able to finish off Gyarados quickly enough if Polyrath managed to go down, so that critical psychic was definitely clutch and very, very much appreciated. But yeah, that's Pokemon Fire Red with only fighting types in a hardcore Nuzlocke setting, and it was a terribly hard run, both at the beginning three badges with a single Mankey, while also being very hard with those last five battles. Picking your spots and basically not having any pivots is really difficult, but I'd love to see if someone would be able to try this run with Hitmonchan so that we'd be able to see if that makes it any easier, or if things like Sabrina are much harder because you don't have that one-shot sweep for that whole fight. Anyway, next time we do a hardcore Nuzlocke, I think it's time we head back to Generation 5 Part 1, since it's been a pretty darn long while since I've done a video in those games. See you guys then! If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, click the bell, tell a friend, and don't spend more than a minute doing that since if you are, you're taking too long. I want to give a huge shout out to my $10 and above patrons, Justin Dimenstein, Zachary Kiever, Aaron Rinesmith, Aiden Brannon, Andy Garber, Casper Kirkpatrick, David Dunn, Jacob Johnson, Kyle Campbell, Landon, Michael Evans, Phoenix Fire, and Zeno. Thank you all so much for your support. If you'd like to support as well, you can head over to my Patreon page, link in the description, where you can get access to stuff like videos early, an exclusive role in my Discord server, link also in the description, challenge requests, and much more. I really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to watch this, and I'll see you guys next time with another challenge. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time.